Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at Click for our second Small Charity IT Day. To those of you that joined us last year, welcome back. And for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, a big welcome to you all. Fantastic. OK. My name is Pav Antoni and I'm a technical account manager here at Click, working with NFPs for the last decade. And today I'm lucky enough to be joined by the fantastic Jonathan Chevalier from Charity Digital Exchange and Charity Digital to discuss our first topic of the day, tips and tools for easy and efficient working for charities. And before we begin, as you can see from the schedule on the screen, there's a lot to cover in today's webinar with lots of valuable information and insight for you all. But firstly, if I may take this opportunity to introduce ourselves as Click IT for Charities, formerly Premier Charity Solutions, we specialise in managed IT services, cloud solutions, cybersecurity and website design for the third sector. We've been working within the IT industry now for over 20 years and we provide free consultancy to charities, have proven third sector experience and if you require any information or insight from ourselves, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Now, we expect each of today's sessions to last roughly 45 minutes and we will be hosting a Q&A towards the end of each one. So please feel free to leave any comments or questions in the Q&A section, which should be visible to you all now. My colleague Jenny will be looking through the Q&A as we go through the event and publishing any questions that we can answer straight away. And Without further ado this morning, I'd like to welcome our first guest speaker of the day, Jonathan Chevalier from Charity Digital. Thank you very much for joining us today, Jonathan. Uh, we will take a moment here to change the presentation and I uh, will put Jonathan on the screen now. Fantastic, Jonathan. Uh, Hello everybody, great to be here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very practical in terms of what I share with you today. We've got a lot of things we do at Charity Digital that can save you time, money or both. So I'm going to lead you through some of those today. First, a little bit of background on Charity Digital. So we're actually a charity ourselves and we're focused on helping other charities. So charities like your organisations to be more successful. And we do this through the use of digital technology. I mentioned saving money. So we do that through ex many great offers. A lot of those are exclusive to us of what we call either donated or discounted technology. We used to do this under the Tech Trust brand. So you might have heard of that in the past, but not know us. Um, it's the same organisation uh, and did it with something called the Exchange. We also provide a lot of free information and training. We used to do this under the uh, Charity Digital News brand, but we dropped the word news because it wasn't really what we were doing. It was more advice, guidance, information, training. So everything is now under the Charity Digital brand. And by the way, um, I've got a resource slide at the back end of this because there's quite a few links in this presentation that could be useful to you. So right at the back end, there's a resource slide and so when the slides are shared after the event, you'll be able to get to those if that's relevant for you. So let's talk first of all about the, uh, the technology access program. So discounted and donated technology, many of these, these offers are through our relationship with TechSoup. So TechSoup are a San Francisco based nonprofit who, as you might guess from their location, are in the ideal place to negotiate some really brilliant deals with what are often West Coast based US technology companies. So they negotiate those deals and then they have a network of organisations in different countries who then take those offers into those local countries. And we're the exclusive partner in the UK. Now, the rules of these offers are not determined by us. They're not determined by TechSoup. They are determined by the vendors in all cases. So I know sometimes people get upset that they can't access some offers. Um, but that's not in our gift. But what we do do is if you do qualify, and most of the offers are actually open to all charities, um, we'll help you to access them. We've got three types of offer. All will save you money. So first is where we have what we call donated technology. 
this is where the, the vendor is actually giving the licenses away free of charge. And we then just have to apply an admin fee on top. You know, so why do we apply an admin fee? Well, we have costs. It's as simple as that at the end of the day. And so the tech, so, so the admin fee pays for the cost of running our organization and enabling you to access these offers. But what it actually means is when you take the admin fee and compare it to the market price of these technologies, this is typically a saving of 95%, well, up to 95%. There's then discounted offers. So these are offers where you're still going to have to pay the vendor something. Um, these more typically apply to cloud services because unlike maybe um, downloadable software where once it's downloaded, there's no cost to the vendor. The vendors do have ongoing costs of providing cloud software, running their servers, running their networks, etc. Um, so they do typically still charge a price, but they can heavily discount, often around 50%, and will then still have to charge a small admin fee to access this offer to cover our costs. The third category is validated offers. So these are offers where we don't charge you anything to access them. Um, sometimes they're free, sometimes they're discounted by the vendors. The reason we don't have to charge on these is the vendors pay us direct uh, a fee, typically for checking that you qualify at the end of the day. Now the TechSoup offers all have to be transacted on a website called the Charity Digital Exchange. It is a bit clunky, for which we apologise. Um, the reason they have to go through that is TechSoup have to account for all of those. There are some improvements on the way to that as well. We also carry a catalogue on the charitydigital.org.uk site, which I think is actually easy to navigate in many cases, though most of the offers can't transact there. Now I'm going to give you a bit of a flavour of some of the offers. Now I'm conscious that I don't want to sound like a walking catalogue in this session. So, so there's lots of information on these slides. I'm not going to read them all out. I'm just going to call out a few points. So first of all, Microsoft on-premise offers. So these are typically very popular, though they are declining because they are becoming less relevant as people move to the cloud. These offers typically save around 90% versus market price when you take the admin fee into account. Uh, as I say, the relevance of these might depend on where you are in terms of your cloud migration. Uh, but certainly the, the Windows offer for many people is, is very, very relevant. Uh, so this is £20 a license for up to 50 licenses and hot off the press news. We have Windows 11 is actually offered available through this offer and downloadable now as well. Then we have Office Standard. So Office is actually the most popular offer that we provide overall. So this is £39 a license again up to 50 licenses that you can have. And again, hot news Office 2021 is actually available for this now. There are then lots of other offers. Uh, picked out a couple here, Windows Server, SQL Server as well. Again, some heavy discounts overall. As I said, I'm not going to read all of these out. The slides will be available. The important point to note on these is, except for the Windows offer, which will continue, these other offers are actually going to stop um, early in April. And this is because Microsoft are moving to their cloud first approach. So they will still be offering discounts through us, but they're nowhere near as good as the donated offers. So if these are relevant to you, we would encourage you to take advantage of them whilst you can. So that means before April, basically. Going to just touch on some other very popular offers. So the um, Adobe Design software, um, best known for creating and editing and managing PDFs. Uh, so we can provide this for an admin fee of £45 per license. So this is an 84% discount against standard prices. Um, there is also the more functional cloud care package, which is obviously cloud based software. Um, that's done on a discounted basis and you can pay a small fee to get access to discounts there. Now Zoom, Zoom's been another super popular offer. Um, this is one that creates quite a lot of confusion because it's a, it's a discount offer. It's a 50% discount that you get, but you do again pay this admin fee. The admin fee means that if you're only buying one license of Zoom, you'll make a small savings, so for 14%. 
um, but it's not much. If you've got more users, so if you've got you know three, four, five, up to ten users, or even more, if you're using any of the value-added services on top, the discounts apply to all of those. So the discounts go up the more you use it, because that admin fee gets distributed over a much um, wider number of licenses. So that's why at the bottom I say the savings. 14% up to nearly 50%, depending on how much you use. Amazon Web Services, Amazon provide um, some credits, $1,000 of credits, which we charge an admin fee of £71 to access. Software that you might not be aware of and whether it's relevant to you depends on what you do, um, is Autodesk. So this is um, computer-aided design software. If you're a charity, there's maybe a charitable museum, art gallery, um, running a historic site, providing training, um, theatre, that type of stuff. All of these actually do quite a lot of design. Um, it's, it's actually super expensive software, uh, this overall. So we charge £149 for this version. There are other licences with different prices as well, uh, but it does represent a 91% saving. So it is a great saving. That's an annual license as well. That one, so it has to be renewed. And then dot digital. This is a bit different because um, we provide this super cheaply by basically we we aggregate, we bulk buy a whole lot of emails from dot digital every year. That enables us to massively discount the price of them. Um, dot digital don't publicly share their pricing, so I can't give you an accurate representation of the saving. Um, but it is significant, and depending on your volume of what you send, so Dot Digital have a minimum spend typically of about £3,600 per annum. Um, we have no minimum. We also have a, a really great kind of onboarding and wraparound service, which, which helps to get charities up and running and effective, helps them manage transitions of staff, all of those things. Security is a really strong area for us. We've got four really nice offers here. Um, Norton Lifelock, Big Defender Gravity, um, both good offers. Um, particularly, uh, I mean, they're good, they're very cheap offers, um, but they don't provide quite as much management capability as our Avast Business Cloud Care offer, which has got more central management to it. So, so it's a bit of a kind of like you pay your money, you take your choice on this one. We, we think they're all great offers. Um, it depends how much functionality, which is best for you there. And they're all big discounts overall. And then Okta, you might not know about Okta, but Okta's, we use it in Charity Digital ourselves because we uh, have many, many different cloud services that we access now in our daily jobs. Uh, and they all require logging on. So Okta does all the password management for us. There's a single sign on. It has multi-factor authentication in it. And it's, it's a really brilliant offer because actually it's 53 licenses. You pay nothing. Opta just pay us a small validation fee to cover your access to that if you're interested. Fundraising. So fundraising is obviously super relevant to our audience um, as charities. And we've got two, two really new interesting offers here. So BOP is um, it's pay it's bank pays payments using QR codes. So you can scan a QR code, it populates all the details. Um, for a bank payment onto someone's phone app, and then they can just um, authorise it in the way they normally would a payment through their app. So in these days when so many people now don't carry cash, this is a super relevant way of processing payments of any size, really. You know, they can be really quite small and still cost effective. And the point here is, you know, we all know that card processing costs are, are high, and actually a lot of platform costs are high. This, because it runs through the banking system, is it's super cheap. And then give panel. Um, if you use Facebook fundraising, um, you'll have seen some of the power in that, but you'll also know that it's quite hard to optimize it. Some of the really big charities spending a lot of internal money on people who are managing their Facebook fundraising presences. Give panel um, provides a suite of software that does that for you. So some really good offers there. Uh, also want to highlight one of our most popular pieces of content, which is the best online fundraising platforms for charities. So we um, 
compile information about a lot of different fundraising solutions that are out there uh, and particularly share a lot of the information about their costs and their charges because a lot of these are actually quite opaque and hard to get to the bottom of so we put it in a really easy format that you compare the different services that's why it's such a such a popular service this to actually go in and just look at them as I say I've got the links to this at the end so you can access it Huge range of other offers. I'm not going to talk through all of these. Safe Foundation, so that's both HR and the accounting software. Otter AI, this is new. This is translation software. Fiverr, so this is access to freelancers. Um, so if you need special skills on a short term basis, you can actually access it them often very cheaply here. Um, Dell, we actually have a range of hardware discounts. Dell's one of the ones we've got here. It's 20% discount on all their equipment available through us doesn't cost any money to access the uh, the Dell one either so lots of things there um I'm conscious of time so just going to very quickly talk about what we're doing in education information and guidance um and hundreds of thousands of people every year actually access our content so top right you've got the uh, picture of Chelsea digital homepage uh, and some of the content that is flowing through there so we literally publish many, many articles and guidances every day here. Uh, so if you subscribe to our service, you'll get regular updates on what's on what's happening here. Um, bottom right, this is our last physical event. This was our conference on in March 2020. And um, we had about 400 people join us at the Olympia Conference Center. We've got our, our next conference physical will actually be March of next year. Details to be released very soon. In the interim period, we've been doing a lot of virtual events. Um, we think they're great, um, events like this, because they're very accessible. So we run all our virtual events free of charge. Our next one is on the subject of fundraising, 14th of October, our Be More Digital Fundraising Day. So if you want to get more into how you build your digital fundraising skills, join us for that day. You can register through our website. Um, but we also run lots of webinars. We run a webinar every two weeks on a whole range of different topics. Uh, so this was one on choosing the best CRM for your organization. And we're also running some what I call deeper training. So if you're a heritage organization, for example, um, we run Heritage Digital, Digital Academy, which is about um, how you develop and implement digital services and how you develop and implement a digital plan. So I'm conscious that's probably my 15 minutes. So this is just the all of the resources overall that you're very welcome to access. Uh, these are clickable links. So when the slides are distributed, you can get to them. What I would encourage you to do is um, register on our website. You can actually register with an interest. So if your interest is only in fundraising, you can register for that and then you don't get notified about any other content. We just tell you about what's happening on fundraising. So that can avoid the feeling of being overspanned. But do please access this, the resources, the virtual events, they're all free of charge. So I hope that gives you a flavour of what we do and how we can save you time and money. Uh, and I'll be available to answer questions after Pav said some more. Thank you very much, Jonathan. That was a really useful insight and I hope uh, I'm sure everyone will agree that Charity Digital is an excellent resource for all things non-profit and a big thank you to you and your team for providing such a valuable service to the sector. I certainly know it's something that we use here every day and we are constantly signposting our customers to Charity Digital um, for all things charity licensing related. Uh, now for my part in this morning session I'd like to share with you just a few tips and tools that we recommend using and we use here ourselves daily at, at Click. So firstly I would like to uh, touch on something that Jonathan did discuss briefly at the beginning there which is Microsoft 365 which is the new name for the Office 365 subscription service. It includes everything Office 365 included and a lot more some of the exists the services included within the Microsoft 365 umbrella uh, hosted email 
um, office applications such as Word, Excel, um, and you get the desktop and the web versions of those. Um, industry leading security and privacy, document sharing, group collaboration, and of course, web and video and voice conferencing. On the screen next to me, I listed a few of the key services provisioned by Microsoft 365 uh, that you should consider using within your organization. And to very briefly touch on each, Microsoft Office is obviously the well-known package of applications such as Word and Excel, PowerPoint and Publisher. And you get, as I said, the browser based as well as the desktop versions of those applications. Um, with most licensing, you'll get the facility to install those on up to five devices per user. So it really does cover everything you need in terms of software. Um, you have Outlook, which is the industry standard for email services, but obviously does host numerous other features such as calendaring and contact management. You have Teams, which is an all-in-one solution for many organizations that includes chat, video conferencing, telephony, file sharing, file storage, and of course various other facilities for live virtual events such as today. Although I will say if you're using Teams for document management and sharing, please do speak to us for further advice on how best to achieve this. There are some things there that you might wish to consider early on in your adoption of Teams. Um, and further to that, we have SharePoint, which is a well known file sharing and collaboration tool. It's most commonly used as a storage solution for digital documents, but can be heavily customized or used differently depending on your requirements, such as intranet facility. Um, we have OneDrive, which provides personal file storage space for Windows user profiles and back backup. And most importantly uh, for us at Click, it's the SharePoint files on demand, which really allows you to work with SharePoint as if all of the data is on your local computer rather than just uh, within a, a browser. Um, and then lastly, the two facilities uh, that we champion through Microsoft 365 um, to secure and manage your network are going to be the Azure Active Directory, which is a cloud based directory that essentially allows you to centrally manage users and their access to your devices and Microsoft Intune, which is the central management of devices and security policy, as well as encryption and applications. And anyone who's been working uh, with regards to GDPR will know that the centralized management of both of those is particularly important. Um, so that's a very brief overview of Microsoft 365. And if any of this is of interest, please don't hesitate to schedule a call with either myself or one of my team and we'll happily assist. There are obviously other suites available, Google, for example, um, and we'd be very happy to discuss the pros and cons there um, of both of those platforms, should you be considering either of those. So. Moving on from Microsoft 365 to another set of cloud hosted applications that we're frequently asked about here at Click, and that's CRM systems or customer relationship management tools. Now, CRM is a technology used to manage interactions with clients and staff and potential customers, and a CRM system helps an organization build customer relationships and streamline their processes. As a charity, if you're looking for a CRM system, you may wish to consider the lights of the security, the cost, the scalability and the functionality. A good CRM system will help you manage things like membership with automation of online jo joining and renewal processes or the ability to track member activity and respond accordingly. Fundraising, you may wish to use a system to collate fundraising data from multiple sources or facilitate fundraising strategies across email, direct mail and social media. Impact, which uh, you might wish to use your CRM for case management and beneficiary communication, as well as capturing data and reporting on any outcomes and their impact. And advocacy in that you could create and manage your outreach campaigns to drive actions like petitions and letter writing. Now there's an abundance of ready made off the shelf CRM systems available to the third sector. Some of the most commonly trusted ones can be seen on the screen next to me. If you're considering a CRM system for your organization, there's fantastic resources available online, and I'd recommend taking a look at some of the comparison websites such as capterra.co.uk, which has a specific non-profit CRM comparison tool. Now, moving on from CRM systems over to something a little bit more exciting, that would be getting creative with a couple of tools that we think are well worth shouting about here at Click. Firstly, Canva. Canva is a free graphics design platform that allows you to easily create stunning content using professionally designed templates. 
You can even upload your own photos and add them to Canva's existing templates using their drag and drop interface. Cost shouldn't be a barrier to good marketing. With Canva for nonprofits, there's no need to pay for professional imagery as you get unlimited access to a library of over 75 million premium images and video, plus thousands of fonts and designer made templates. The best thing about Canva is it's all browser based and can run on almost any device like most of the cloud services discussed today. We'll never need updating or renewing. This means Canva for Nonprofit has everything you need to create a powerful marketing campaign, including but not limited to social media posts, presentations, infographics, reports, posters, flyers and signage. And just in case, if Canva doesn't have the imagery you're looking for, you could try a service that we use called Pexels, which is a wonderful service that provides high quality and completely free stock photos licensed under the Pexels license. All photos are very well tagged and searchable and also easy to discover, to discover through their discovery pages. Um, so that's a couple of services that we certainly recommend looking at. And who knows, you might be surprised at what you could achieve without having to spend any money. And finally, moving on to my last topic for this morning, it's one that I'm certain everyone has used over the past 18 months or so and is using right now, and that would be virtual events. Now, what exactly is a virtual event? It may seem obvious, but a virtual event is any kind of event you host online. This includes webinars, demos, masterclasses, Q&As, panel interviews, and much, much more. A benefit of hosting a event virtually includes large reach because the internet knows no boundaries and you can certainly target a much larger audience over the web and there is with many of the platforms that we use no capacity limits so you can effectively have an unlimited audience there are no time limits as you would find if you had a in-person live event um, and there can if you choose so not be a cost to attend you can have a free event um, you know, largely <clears throat> free for most visitors or free for your, for your audience. Um, and then, of course, you will all benefit from better accessibility if people can attend from the comfort of their own home using their devices. Um, all of that leads to simpler logistics in that you have no venue to arrange, no catering, no decorating, no AV equipment to arrange. And of course, you can even operate during a pandemic. And um, that all has a knock on effect to your cost efficiency in that you don't have to spend on any of the above venues, catering or audio video equipment. Um, and you have minimal overheads in that you don't have any signage or physical tickets or physical security required. So there's so many fantastic reasons to go with a, a virtual event. Um, and lastly, here I have a note on that you would have a far better reporting with tools such as viewer statistics and in-depth analytics and reporting um, and automated processes. Now, there are several platforms you can choose from to host your online event. These include the likes of Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. I must admit that my favorites are going to be Teams for the functionality and YouTube for ease of use and scalability as well as accessibility. So why not have, head over to the giveforms.com blog for more fantastic information on hosting online fundraising events. So that concludes my talk for this morning. A brief summary of topics discussed is on the screen next to me. And if you'd like to find out more about anything we've touched on, please don't hesitate to get in touch with myself via the link in the Q&A. And We'd like to take a moment to answer a few of the questions in the Q&A. I noticed that there are quite a few and I'm sorry if we can't answer them all today. If we don't get to yours, please do feel free to get in touch and schedule a call with myself or one of the team. I'll have to take myself off of the video here and I'll unmute my colleague Jonathan just so that we can um, both respond to the Q&A here. Won't be a second. Fantastic, Jonathan, are you with us? Yes, I'm back again, so very happy to answer any questions about um, what we do at Charity Digital and the product offers or information that we can provide there as well. Fantastic, excellent. Well, one of the questions that's been raised here, uh, Jonathan, is, is firstly probably for more for ourselves, is will these webinars be available uh, in recorded format? They certainly will be. They will be available through our Click website, um, so please do keep an eye on the link uh, within the, the top of the Q&A or visit our blog on our website, um, so they will be available. Um, and 
secondly, a question that has been raised here, Jonathan, is can I ask what is the easiest to use uh, file sharing and comms platform for a small new charity with 10 or so trustees that's ideally free? Um, now, I personally would suggest the likes of Microsoft 365, as we have uh, touched on here this morning. I wonder, Jonathan, if you have any other experience with uh, Google or with any of the other competitors to that? Yeah, uh, I mean, in effect, you've got four choices that, that come to mind. And and to a certain extent, it depends on what your users are most, most familiar with, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, you've definitely got the, uh, the Microsoft Office. Um, around OneDrive and SharePoint, um, and then you've got Google. Um, I personally don't find Google that easy to re-retrieve things. Um, then there's the likes of um, Dropbox and Box. Um, I actually quite like Dropbox from the perspective that it kind of presents everything in a really nice, easy format, but it doesn't have live synchronization. So it's very poor if you want to collaborate on documents. It's great for sharing finished documents. If you want to collaborate, ideally you're going to be um, using Microsoft or Google, I'd say. Fantastic. That's really useful to know and I'm, I would agree there as well. And please do get in touch with ourselves if you'd like a little bit more information and for us to assist you in comparing the various platforms that are available. But certainly in our experience, the, the Microsoft offering it tends to be um, the one that wins in most situations. It's just a fantastic resource. It integrates so well with uh, the entire Microsoft ecosystem and everybody or the majority of, of users are using Microsoft Windows and using Microsoft Office on a daily basis. So it all works hand in hand there but it's not to say it's the only one and, and definitely do get in touch if there are more queries surrounding that as well um, and then we do have a comment on that on the Q&A which is really interesting and I'd like to share with everybody um, it says it's not a question it's just some info apparently there is an intro to Canva on the 21st of October organized by the Small Charities Coalition for five pounds I definitely recommend sinking your teeth into Canva because it's amazing what you can achieve with it I'll publish that comment as well so that will be available in the published um, I must admit unfortunately we are running out of time here this morning but we'll certainly do our best to respond to the other queries um, either by email or in the comments so if there are any other questions please do um, send them through and as I say if you would like to um, get in touch with us uh, please do feel free to join us via the link in the Q&A or through our contact us on the website as well um, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. We look forward to joining you on the next talk at 11.30 a.m. with my colleague Adam Graham and the fantastic Carl Torres from Sophos. Um, and, and without uh, keeping you any further, thank you very much for your time and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.